After we uh, read about confession and repentance, we're reading lesson 11 about prayer. In the last lesson, we learned how repentance is our path back to God. When we lose our way or wander off from home, repentance is what brings us back to God, our Father, and to our Mother, the Church. And when we have made our hearts dark and dirty with sins, repentance and the mystery of confession allows us to get rid of the trash that has piled up in our hearts, cleansed it, and makes room for the light and grace of Christ. But why do we need repentance? Shouldn't it be easy to love God and to follow His commandments? No, it's not easy. Why? There is one big reason. Because we forget. We forget God. This is the biggest problem we have as God's creatures and as Orthodox Christians. We forget God. Remembering your best friend. When Adam and Eve were in paradise, God was their best friend. They never forgot him. Not a day, not an hour, not a minute, not a second went by when they did not feel their friend with them. They did not need to try to remember God because their hearts were always with him. Their hearts were praying to God all the time. With every beat of their hearts, they remembered God and knew he was with them. And with every breath they breathed in God's love and goodness. Do you have to remember to breathe? Of course not. For Adam and Eve in paradise, prayer was just like breathing. But when they sinned, all of this changed. God did not change. They changed. God still loved them completely, but they could not feel his love like they used to. Their hearts became dull and darkened, and they did not realize anymore that God was with them. So after a while, they started making other friends that were not really friends at all, and they forgot God. Instead of remembering God, they thought of other things. What do you think some of those things were? how many possessions, or how much money they could get, why others seemed to have more than them, how much food they could eat, how they could be better and more important than their neighbor. They tried to make their hearts happy with things like these. But do you think it worked? No, it did not. Not for long. Their hearts became dull and darkened, and they always ended up feeling empty. It is lonely to be without God. Are these things really friends? They are not really friends, and certainly not best friends. Now, do you have a best friend, or at least a very good friend? Do you love being with them? Do you think about them? When you are not with them, are you excited about the next time you will be with them? Do you feel your hearts are joined together? This is how we ought to be with God, like best friends. Do you forget your best friends? No. And we should try not to forget God either. Do you know what it is called when we remember God? It is called prayer. Prayer is when our hearts are joined together with God. Prayer is not just talking or using words. When you are with your best friend, are you talking all the time? No, it is enough to be together. Prayer is being together with God. 
It is enjoying His friendship, His company. Prayer is what we do when we really love God. We remember Him. Do you love God? One Saint Herman of Alaska was traveling on a ship. He began talking to the sailors who worked on that ship. He asked them about their lives, about their families, their hopes and dreams. Then he asked them if they loved God. They said, of course we love God. Doesn't everyone? We go to church when we can, and we try to do good to our neighbor. Then St. Herman said, I wish I truly loved God with all my heart. If I did, I would think of God at every moment. I would never forget him. I would rejoice whenever I had time to be with him. I would thank him for all the good things in my life and even for the difficult things. I would always feel him in my heart and all around me. Saint Herman was teaching them what it means to have true prayer. The sailors looked around to each other. They realized maybe they did not love God as much as they thought they did. Perhaps God was not really their best friend. And Saint Herman said, From this day forward, from this hour, from this moment on, let us love God above all. Prayer is what we do when we love God above all. Now, this kind of prayer does not come without some effort on our part. We don't start right away with this kind of prayer. We have to work up to it. We start at the beginning. We have to practice. Practice and practice again. So how do we learn to pray? Think about it. How did we learn to talk when we were just babies? Did we learn to talk with our mouth first or with our ears? Actually, it was with our ears. Our mom and dad talked to us and we listened to them. We listened to our brothers and sisters too, if we had them. Slowly, we started to use words too, right? We said, mommy, doggy, blanky. Then we began to speak in sentences like, mommy, I'm hungry. So we learned how to talk by listening to our mother. We learned how to pray also by listening to our mother, the church. And the church has learned how to pray by listening to the Holy Spirit. We learn how to speak to God by hearing the prayers of the church. Many of those words come from the Bible. She shows us how to be with God as our best friend and to connect to Him in our hearts. She helps us, the church, to know what words to use so our hearts can be near Him. Our Lord Jesus Christ taught us how to pray to God as Father. God is Jesus' Father. But if we are united with Jesus in baptism and have been anointed with the same Spirit as Jesus in chrismation, we become like Jesus, a Son of God. Jesus is God's only natural Son. He has always been God's Son. But now, through Jesus Christ, we have become adopted into God's family as sons and daughters. This means we now have Jesus as our brother and God as our father. And so Jesus gave us this most important prayer, our father. This prayer shows us how to pray as one of God's own beloved children. If we want to connect with God, we must know Him as He is, as our Father and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
What we say to him is very important. Now remember, your best friend here on earth. We should be able to speak freely with them. But can you say just anything to them? What if you say, I don't like you? Or you are not fun? Do you think your friend would want to be with you if you say these things? Probably not. Certain things we say will bring us closer together, while other things may be harmful to our relationship. For instance, if we lie to our friend, we may push our friend away and harm our friendship. How we pray to God, how we address Him, the words we use are important. Our words have to be holy and humble and true. What if you said to your best friend, you are 10 feet tall, or you have three noses? It might be funny at first, but after a while, it would make your friend feel like you don't really know them or appreciate them for who they are. Our words to God should be truthful. God has given words of prayer to the church, to the holy Bible, the liturgy, the saints, and sometimes even the angels. One of the most important prayers and hymns of the church was taught to an Orthodox Christian boy by angels. Do you know which prayer? And do you know the story? About 1500 years ago, the great Christian city of Constantinople was being shaken by earthquakes. Not just one earthquake, but many earthquakes over a period of days and weeks. Some buildings were collapsing and the people were afraid. Patriarch Proclus told the people to go outside of the city and pray. The whole city lived in tents outside of Constantinople and prayed together throughout each day, being led by the patriarch and priests. Once... When the people were praying, a young boy was taken up from the crowd into heaven. His family thought a strong wind had swept him away and they were sad. But after a few minutes, the boy came down to his family. They were so happy to see him safe. But something was different. The boy said he had seen angels and received from them a new prayer, which is sung in heaven. The angels told him to teach this new song to the patriarch and to all Christians. And that's what happened. As the boys sang the angel song over and over to the patriarch, the people began gathering around to hear the new prayer given from above. Soon the patriarch also began to sing. One by one more voices were added, men, women, and children all praying to God with this hymn until the sound seemed to fill the whole universe. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. As quickly as the earthquakes had begun, now they stopped and did not return. The prayers of the church are not just any prayers. They are inspired by God and have the power to make holy those who pray them with faith. The prayers of the church, our mother, are full of truth and grace, and through them we learn to pray in a way that unites us with God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. The church, our mother, not only teaches us how to pray, but also she instructs us how to to pray certain prayer at certain times each year. This is called a prayer roll. Because we use the same prayers at the same time every day, Orthodox Christians are to keep their prayer roll every morning and every evening standing before the icons in their home. The morning is an important time to pray because we need to begin each day with God's presence and blessing. 
The evening is also a special time to thank God for the day that is past and ask for his protection and grace through the night. These two times of prayer are like our spiritual bookends. They hold us together throughout the day and keeps us strong, stable, and upright. But as Orthodox Christians, we don't just pray when we go to church. And we don't just pray in the morning and in the evening. We try to pray in our hearts all the time, like Adam and Eve in paradise. The church gives us another very important prayer to help us remember Christ at all times. It is one of the most important prayers of the church and also one of the simplest. It is called the Jesus Prayer. Have you heard of the Jesus Prayer? Lord, Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. Can you memorize this prayer? Lord, Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. This is simple prayer. And it can be with us at any time, at home, school, in church, when we're playing, when we're alone, when we're with friends. Saying the Jesus prayer is like walking through a field in the same place every day. What happens if you walk over weeds and brush over and over? You clear a path, a road, right? If we use the Jesus prayer a lot, we make a path in our heart that keeps us always with God. And this is the goal of prayer. To always be with God, our best friend.